this is a book first and foremost about the internet and how the internet can, because of, you know, just complete unbridled access by anyone, be weaponized. Tell us from your perspective, what is the book about? So the book, I always say it's mainly about the internet, but it focuses on an Instagram famous couple called Oliver and Michael who are due to be married in a month's time. Um, they are very famous on, you know, not just Instagram, but sort of Twitter. Um, she's a feminist journalist. He's a, you know, up and coming podcaster who's just got his dream job. Mm-hmm. And dun, 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 mm-hmm. just before they get married, an anonymous list goes up online accusing 70 different men of varying forms of abuse of course, Michael's name is on the list and Ola has to decide within a month whether she's going to stand by him and get married or whether, you know, she believes the allegations, essentially. And all hell breaks loose oh. for 384 pages. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is absolutely phenomenal. Oh, I mean, because oh it's like, it's sort of, like, it's like a thriller, but it's also taking into account loads well it feels very very modern to talk about the internet and how that can change people's lives and there are people who will just say things online and they can be true and they can't be true and they they, and and what is amazing is you see it lot through michael but also through ola's perspective right this young woman who thinks she knows her partner thinks she knows the world and some suddenly she's thrown into everything being in a grey area. Absolutely. I think she knows herself because yes. she thinks, you know, she's a feminist woman. She is a feminist woman. Yeah. There's not even something she thinks she is. It's her job. It's her online identity. And I think that in some ways, all of us, we all think we know what yes. we'd do if we were in a position like that. And then the minute, you know, someone adjacent to you, close to you, even not close to you, just recognise a name on something like that, which actually does, especially post Me Too, happen quite a lot when those kind of lists are curated. Suddenly mm. your whole sense of self, your whole sense of morality is thrown into question. So yes. I wanted a lot of people to look at Ola and just be like, what would I actually do? Not yes. what would I tweet that I'd do? What would I actually do if that was me? Well, I think that's as well, that's what feels so prescient, isn't it? Like a lot of people online seem to find it very easy to judge and to kind of be very right. polarised Myself about included. Things. Well, me too. <laughs> I'm constantly like, me well, too. I wouldn't do that. Yeah, and we scroll through and we go, right. that's outrageous, that's terrible, that, that's happened, or that person's done that. And then, of course, what happens to Ola is that suddenly she's in a position where she no longer has that that simplicity of her life. Exactly. And I, th- I thought it was absolutely incredible for that. Thank I just you. thought it was, because it, it just feels like we live in an age when the internet loves to simplify things in a very sort of, sim- well, sort of quite tabloidy way at times, doesn't yeah. it? And, and I think actually sometimes we've lost our sense of humanity and Ola, suddenly we have total sympathy for, for Ola. What was she going to, like you say, what? What is she going to do? Absolutely. And um, I thought it was incredible writing. Incredible, Thanks. incredible writing. Because oh, you I'm see yourself, so at, and then shy. Ola's friends and family, and you think, well, what are they going to say? Exactly. What, and of course, they're very defensive of Ola. But then you go, well, yeah, you would be of your friend. But then I suppose some other friends are going, well, no, it's not as simple as that. And you don't know. And, you know, she loves this guy. And it's it's a really amazing um, microcosm, I think, of, of a moral dilemma that feels like it's going to have people talking for, for a long, long time. I think, yeah, that is the hope. I was definitely incredibly nervous writing it because I felt, well, I had the idea actually in 2017 and I felt it was slightly too maybe um, of the time to write it back then. So I thought with maybe a bit of distance, maybe fictionalising mm. it, it would give a bit of room, as you said, for conversation. Because I do think I'm very conscious of the fact that this conversation, hate to use the term, but around cancel culture, around, you know, um, sort of the Me Too movement and any sort of critical lens is often only had by a particular type of person. It, right. It's very rarely something that, you know, necessarily progressive people are discussing in a critical way and looking at the idea of, for, for instance, like innocent pro- before proven guilty as a, you know, kind of core tenet of left wing thinking and progressivism. And I think mm. um, often when you kind of say cancel culture, people immediately think, you know it's a dog whistle for like right-wing thinking or or something like that but i wanted to kind of talk about it from a feminist perspective and say look this is a book first and foremost about the internet and how the internet can because of you know just complete unbridled access by anyone be weaponized and weaponized the most well-meaning of movements and um yeah i'm hoping that well actually i I was about to say hoping but i think it is causing a bit of conversation around that i think it's absolutely phenomenal for just thank you uh yeah for exploring a uh, hugely complex time that we live in and it does it so eloquently so succinctly in what is an absolute page turner so it's an absolute triumph of a book so congratulations to you